Hi everyone, it's Daniel here for Design Break and today I want to talk about three pros and three cons of Webflow when compared to using something like a WordPress uh, with Elementor set up. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing I've got on my list here is um, the control over the design. So when you're building with Elementor, um, you're typically building just sections and columns um, and then the elements within those and the elements you get are kind of your text elements, uh, an image element um, and you're sort of restricted by um, what, what Elementor give you to add into these element blocks. Um, and then when it comes to actually laying out the design, you're then again slightly restricted on how the how the design comes together. With Webflow, because you're building in terms of the actual code, you know, we're building in, in div blocks, um, visually, of course, but um, it, it gives you that control over how things are gonna come together. You have much more granular control over um, the actual styling that's applied to an element. So with Elementary, you've got just less settings, I suppose, and, and with, with Webflow, you have much more control. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't cover all the CSS properties you can change, but there's a much larger selection available. You can make much more granular changes um, to really get the design perfected. Okay, so the first con I have is uh, a, it's a steeper learning curve. So when you're working with something like Elementor, it's very drag and drop. You've got section, you've got uh, a column, you know, you drop in the columns, you just click add new column and it'll just add new columns and automatically space them. Um, it automatically adds padding to everything, which I actually personally hate. But if you were, you know, from a beginner standpoint, it's it adds a bit of breathing space to the design. So. Um, so yeah, so, so when you're building an Elementor, it will seem easier to put something together. The controls in um, Webflow look a little bit like an Adobe application, like Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. There's more on offer in terms of what you can do with the tool, but obviously it's a little bit more complicated to use. So the second pro I have is really fast hosting, which also comes hand in hand with the light uh, website weight, if you like. Um, so Webflow, allows you to publish sites without actually um, getting a third party hosting provider. So you can publish sites um, with Webflow. They're on AWS servers, uh, which is Amazon Web Services, and they're lightning quick, uh, like really, really fast. Um, and I think part, a large part of that is because when you're building a site, there's, n there's no extra bloat there, which there can often be with WordPress sites. When you start getting up there, um, you know, with 10, 15 plugins uh, and everything's kind of just getting a bit heavy and bloated, you don't have that issue with, with Webflow because it's, it's super clean. It generates clean code because ultimately you are building in code. You just don't see the code it's being generated behind. But with Elementor and WordPress, you kind of, um, the elements are creating unnecessary code that you're not seeing. It's a difficult one to, explain, to get fully explain, but um, I'll maybe go into more detail on how that works in a future video. So the second con I have is, um, there are still a few quirks with Webflow and they're really small niggly things. Um, a strange one, for example, is if you have contact forms on the website, is say you have different contact forms throughout this website, they can all only be sent to one email address. Um, so if you have, you know, if you want to have a, an accounts um, query contact form then and have that go to accounts and then another one for sales. You can't do that with the default setup. Now it does integrate with um, Zapier and it integrates with Integromat so and probably others. Um, it's very easy to bypass this. It's just really strange that they've omitted what's, what is such an obvious thing um, in, in WordPress. And there are a few other things I'll maybe go into detail again on a, in a future video, L little quirks, but small things, mostly to do with e-commerce as well. There, there's a few things, they've only just introduced coupon codes very recently, so, um, but they are working on, the, on, on Webflow. They constantly develop it and it is definitely getting a lot better. The third pro I have on my list is that Webflow is a real bridge between design and development. So unlike Elementor where you're still having lots of extra code and lots of extra bloat being generated when you put your sections and your columns and you add everything in. Uh, Webflow is actually allowing you to generate the code in a really clean 
and, and sort of efficient manner. Okay, so let's say for example you have a section and you want a container and you want to have three columns within that container. In elementary, you'd drag your section in, you would drag your container in, you'd add, add your uh, columns and, and the plus to get three columns. Um, so you would think you'd have you know, one div block for the section, one for the container, and one for each column. But in, in, in truth, what you actually would have is the, the container, you'd actually have like three, potentially, div, three div blocks for the container. And this is because they support background images, they support effects on the background images. And then you also have the, the container, which also has multiple div blocks. And then again, with the columns, they are also multiple div blocks so that they can support the background image features and all the rest of the sort of special features that, that Elementor offers at the click of a button. So with Webflow, what you're actually doing is you, you create a div block and then another div block inside that and then the three column div block inside your container. All of that, you're literally just creating as many div blocks as you are dragging into the page. So you're, the, all the code that's gonna be generated is only the code for those blocks that you've created. So it's super clean and it allows a designer or whoever's creating the website in Webflow to really build and have the code generated for just what they're building. And finally, I've realized I've ended this on a con, uh, which isn't ideal, but um, the, the third con I have here is cost. So Webflow is a free platform to, to use. Um, you can basically download it, install it on a hosting um, platform, and you can use it for, for free. Um, when it comes to plugins, so to really fully get all the benefits you get with Elementor for, in terms of like the theme building, um, you have to pay for it. So that's, that's definitely a cost you would need to factor in if you, if you really want to use WordPress in a similar way to how you might use Webflow. Um, there ha have been a few other videos that have directly compared the cost because ultimately once you have paid for your hosting, once you've paid for uh, you know, premium plugins, because a lot of the time if you're doing anything you know, relatively comp complex, you can't get away with just um, Elementor Pro, you'll have to have a couple of extra plugins on there, some of which, you know, one or two may be paid as well. So really, I, I think the cost is fairly balanced, but with Webflow, there is definitely a license cost and it's got, it is a comparative, you know, their hosting is really good, so it's worth paying for it, but it's obviously a little bit extra depending on what kind of hosting you're using for, um, for your WordPress setup. So, so that's just been a really quick pros and cons list there um, comp with Webflow compared to something like a WordPress and Elementor setup. Um, obviously there are loads more. I'll maybe do another video in future with some more, but that was just a quick overview. Um, so if you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe to Design Break. And I'll see you in the next one. All right.